Although many experiments have been carried out to determine that DNA was a heritable material of a cell, its structure still kind of remained a mystery. So that's where a lot of important names that you've probably heard in Bio 1 and Bio 2 come in. Specifically, we'll be talking about the contributions to our knowledge of secondary structure from Rosalind Franklin, Watson, and Crick. The first is Rosalind Franklin. Rosalind Franklin was an x-ray technician, and she used a technique called x-ray crystallography. In x-ray crystallography, a sample is crystallized, hence the name, and a high-energy beam of x-rays is shot across it and is analyzed on a screen, much like when you get an x-ray. From this data that Rosalind Franklin collected, they were able to see that the DNA structure was actually helical. Watson and Crick were able to break through this mystery using the X-ray images that Rosalind Franklin had collected, as well as their knowledge of chemistry, of Chargaff's rules, of base pairing, as well as simply making stick and clay models of DNA until they came up with this structure. Watson and Crick's original discovery was right-handed B DNA. However, more types of DNA than this exist that you learn about in biochemistry. DNA as a double helix means it has a structure similar to this, with two strands which are complementary and anti-parallel to each other. Now what does this mean? Complementary means that the bases going in one direction are the opposite of bases going in the other direction. And the reason for this is the distinct anti-parallel nature. So on one side of DNA, you'll have a five prime end, and on the other side, you'll have a three prime end. This is shown right here in this model of a DNA base pair. The bases shown here are an adenine, or A, and a thymine. A's and T's, or an RNA, A's and U's, or G's and C's, or guanine and cytosine always bind together. As a note, guanine and cytosine have a more tight connection with each other than adenine and thymine because there is three bonds between G and C as opposed to only two between A and T when they base pair. The complementarity of DNA can best be shown through writing out a sequence of DNA. If we had the sequence A, T, C, G, A, T, G, its complement would be T, A, G, C, T, A, C. And just as a general note, when we write out DNA on the left side, we write the five prime end. And on the right side, we write the three prime end. And remember that DNA is anti-parallel. So if we have five prime on this strand, so the strand's going from five prime to three prime, then this complementary strand is going from three prime to five prime. And again, what does this three prime and five prime refer to? 5' prime refers to the presence of the phosphate group on the 5' prime carbon of the DNA sugar, and the 3' prime refers to the hydroxyl group on the 3' prime carbon of the sugar phosphate backbone. Shown here is a sugar phosphate backbone. Please note that the X here means that this could be DNA or RNA. If it was DNA, it would be missing the 2' prime hydroxyl group, hence deoxyribonucleic acid, and this would be a hydrogen. If it was RNA, it would be a hydroxyl group. DNA backbone is joined together by three 5 phosphodiester bonds. A phosphodiester bond is a bond between the phosphate group at the 5' prime end of one sugar and the 3' prime hydroxyl group of another sugar. The 3 5 name is important because that implies that you need to have a 3 prime hydroxyl group to actually initiate DNA replication, which is, as you'll see in a later chapter, why you need to have a primer when you start replication. This has been the basics of DNA structure and discovery in a video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what genetics class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are currently enrolled as a Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services. Our tutoring center is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson Building. You will find all the details you need to know about these services on our website, www.baylor.edu. You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online through Navigate, 
or just drop in during our open business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.